Hi, I'm Dr. Pam Maragliano Muniz. We're here with Sarah. She's 39 years old and she has a 20 year old amalgam restoration that's starting to break down on tooth number 14. You can see that it's margins at the cave surface margins are starting to open up and there's a subsurface graying underneath that amalgam. So it's time to take it out. And so we're going to remove the amalgam today and we are going to restore it with Omnichroma Blocker Flow and Omnichroma Flow. So Sarah's numb. We've got our rubber dam in place. This is real life. So we had to use a little bit of liquid dam to cover a little um, void in our rubber dam and I'm ready to get started. So one of the best things that we can do to remove amalgam, use a brand new burr. It will help you cut the, the tooth efficiently, get rid of the amalgam quickly, and also make sure that you can remove caries as cleanly and smoothly as possible. So let's get started. For this preparation, I'm using a size 35 inverted cone carbide. I don't need mechanical retention for this restoration, but it removes amalgam very efficiently and it works comfortably in my hands. So that's my kind of operative dentistry burr. That's my go-to. A little bit more to remove. So our preparation's nearly done. Margins are clean. You can see here that there's a lot of discoloration underneath this amalgam. I'll probably clean up right here just a little bit more, but the tooth structure is rock solid. So without a doubt, we're going to use Omnichroma Blocker Flow to help us block out some of these discolorations. Okay, let's finish smoothing and then we're ready to go. All right, so our preparation is nearly complete. All of the caries have been removed, amalgam is gone. Now the one thing left to do before we start restoring is bevel. I like to bevel my enamel margins for a few reasons. Number one, it allows me to adapt my composite more nicely to the tooth. I also am a huge fan, which we all are, of, of enamel bonding. So the more enamel that we bond to, the better longevity of a restoration that we'll get. So blending, aesthetics, and bonding, definitely try to get a good enamel bond. And I do that with bevel. So to bevel, I like to use a nice fluted diamond burr. And again, I have a few different shapes and I just use what adapts best to the tooth. Okay. You okay, Sarah? Mm -hmm. okay. okay, and we're ready to restore. You might be wondering how big of a bevel that I consider placing. It really depends on the preparation. I obviously always try to err on the side of being minimally invasive. So generally my bevel is about 0.5, sometimes a millimeter if I have the space, but I really just try to roughen up the enamel around the preparation for better bonding. So to bond our restoration, we're going to use the selective etch technique. I tend to be a fan of that, um, but we're going to be using universal bond for this. Universal bond is awesome because you don't require a light and it's also compatible with any etch technique that you prefer. So if you prefer total etch or self etch, you can use universal bond for that.
Okay, Polly. Let's rinse. One of my favorite additions to my toolkit here is having a syringe that's dedicated to just air. So when I'm drying a tooth prior to bonding, thinning bonding agent, I like to use this syringe. Now this bonding agent also does not require any scrubbing into the tooth structure. So you basically place it and thin it out. No light is necessary here. Now I'm not scrubbing the bonding agent, I'm just trying to make sure that it's completely covering my preparation. Start with a thin, light gust of air here. And then you can, after about five or 10 seconds, you can increase the intensity of the air all over the preparation until you see no movement of any bonding agent. When you see that, we're ready to roll. So as I mentioned, we've got some discoloration of the tooth structure and we're going to use Omnichroma Blocker Flow for this. I'm gonna be hold up for one second. This preparation is probably in the ballpark of two, maybe three millimeters at, in the deepest. So as I'm placing my Omnichroma Blocker Flow, I know I need a good solid millimeter here. So if my prep is two millimeters, I know I have to go about halfway up. This is a material that needs to be incrementally placed. And when you're syringing the material onto the tooth, keep the tip of the syringe embedded in with the material. If you lift it and raise it and lower it, you'll probably incorporate some air bubbles here. So I just wanna come in and make sure I cover all my discolored areas. What happens if you miss a spot? You can always come back and add a little bit more. So no worries there. This is a great material also because it has the ability to self-level itself. So when you're applying it and you see that it will kind of creep into some of the nooks and crannies that we need. So there's probably a couple of other areas here that I'm going to add another increment, but go ahead and cure. It's important to pay attention to the intensity of your curing light. This is a material with my light only needs to be cured for 10 seconds. And I see a couple of spots here that I'm going to add just a touch more. So we like Sarah here. We want her to leave with a gorgeous restoration. Okay, Polly. Now, if we were doing a class three composite or a large class floor, we could use Omnichroma Blocker Flow as a lingual shelf. But for that instance, we'd probably only want to use about a half a millimeter increment. Actually, I see one extra little spot here. I'd like to add a little bit of blocker. Now, if you overdo it with the blocker, what you'll find is you probably will have a restoration that lacks chroma and your value might be a little high. But on a posterior tooth, probably not the end of the world, but obviously we're trying to get our restoration as close to natural as we can. Okay. And Omnichroma Flow, thank you. Now, as I mentioned, as you extrude, uh, extrude this material into the tooth, the material looks very white, which is very helpful, especially wearing loops and having my orange filter. It's great to be able to see the restorative material. 
And so I have about a millimeter, millimeter and a half to fill here. So we can do this incrementally. So I'm gonna do part of the prep, go ahead and cure. Great. As I said, when you place the material, keep the tip embedded with the material and kind of fill from there. If you move the tip around too much, you may incorporate air bubbles. And we don't want that, no voids in our restorations here. And can I have a little bit more Omnichroma flow, please? Thank you. So the name of this material is also a little bit deceiving. You hear flow and you think flowable, meaning I can only use this as a liner or underneath my restoration. This restorative material is indicated for all restorations as a definitive restoration. So you can use this for class ones class twos, class threes, class fours, even class fives. It's a great material for any direct indication. You can build up your cusp tips with this, or you can do what I'm doing where I'm placing this restoration and I'll build my grooves in a little bit later. And I'm just kind of dragging it over the cave of surface margin so I don't have any voids and I have nice sealed restorative margins. Okay, Polly, we're all set. Great. Beautiful margins, nice and well sealed. And I think we've got a pretty good match here. Excellent. So now what we need to do is just finish and polish our restoration. It is a composite, so you use your favorite finishing burrs and your favorite polishing burrs. For me, my favorite finishers is the occlusinator. It helps me create really beautiful occlusal anatomy. So we're going to start the finishing process, then we'll remove the rubber dam, check occlusion, finalize it, and then polish. Here we go. Love it. Beauty and function, it's a great combination. Okay, let's remove this rubber dam. Sarah, you're gonna be so happy. And our clamp. Thank you. Beautiful. 
Alright. Just a few areas to adjust here. And I don't like always using a football shaper to adjust my occlusion. And the reason for that is teeth aren't always shaped like a football. So here I'm going to refine my grooves and adjust the occlusion all at the same time. Let's see. All right, let's check occlusion again. A little bit more. There we go. How's that feeling, Sarah? Feels really good. Is there any any high spots? Let's check one more time. Excellent. And bite down. Looks great. Okay, we just need to polish. So once again, it's a composite. You can use your favorite compolish, composite polishing system. And today we're going to use the Diacomp Feather Light from Brassler. I like that the bristles are flexible. They can get into our grooves really nicely. And we'll keep the water on for this, please. And you'll see pretty quickly that this material polishability is fantastic. And I know that we're going to be able to rely on this shine for a long, long time. <laughs> 